morning, Madam Alka. Thank you very much for the wonderful introduction. Now, let me acknowledge the presence of uh, our trio and the district office members here. Good morning. And a warm good morning to all the leaders who have joined here. How are you all today? I, I know it's not that easy to wake up in the morning and, you know, be here nicely dressed up. But still, you have taken that first initiative to be here. That is the good sign of a leader. That's wonderful leadership that you have come forward to serve the XCOM, your club for that matter, actually. So you're all leaders, wonderful leaders, actually. Now, talking about district uh, director mentioning that we have to bring back that legacy. Yes, we need to bring back the legacy because 2018, I was part of the team which uh, made District 20 the fairly distinguished, actually. And it's the time now that we bring back that legacy. And I'm sure this we can do it this year with the help of all the officers here. When I say all the officers, we are all part of it, actually. That is what we need to understand. When we talk about bringing back the legacy, it's not the role of the PO alone, the district director, the program quality director, and the CGD. It's our responsibility. We can take pride, actually. See, I, I'm taking today pride that I was part of the team which led to Smedley Distinguished. Tomorrow, you can also cherish that. Yes, we are also part of the team which brought in Smedley Distinguished district, actually. It really gives an overall achievement. But as a club officer, what can I do if I'm a sergeant terms? I am just a you know secretary, I'm a treasurer, no matter what actually. All you need to do is you need to do your role perfectly so that everybody collectively does the role. If we start skipping our role, then what happens is that on a long run, we also face challenges. So just a small introduction. Now talking about today's service and leadership, actually, many of us confuse on leadership part actually because I also I was also confused a bit because at work I'm a manager I'm managing a team whereas in Toastmasters actually I am a sergeant terms for particularly for three years actually in the club which I joined because uh, they really liked the work I was doing and uh, they encouraged me to take up the role of sergeant terms three rows three years in a row I was the sergeant terms and I was the best sergeant terms in my club, actually. Because why? Because I used to reach the meeting early, arrange everything, ensure everything is packed and kept back. And so if you are a sergeant, terms, don't think that it's the lowest role. What is this job I'm doing? I'm a manager in my office, whereas here I'm doing this. This is all service, actually. Now, talking about service, it's very difficult to talk about service in a non-profit organization because everybody has joined here for a reason, but bringing them to a team, Working as a team, it's a biggest challenge. I, I do agree because here everybody have their own commitment. Everybody have their own interest and their own priorities in life, actually. So if I am doing my role as a leader, it's not necessary that the other we can expect the same from the other person. How to do that, actually, we will be going through in this process, actually. This is a very short presentation, which um, DTM Khalid uh, Jalal has given to me. Uh, Considering the time factor, I would be, you know, limiting to my time. But thank you, for, uh, DDM Khalid Jalal, for giving me this opportunity. A subject we really like to talk about, actually. Now, let's go to the slide. I'll be uh, sharing my this training. Now, talking about servant leadership. Now, first, let, let us define what is leadership in a non-profit organization and in a corporate organization, actually. This is the most challenging part because... Leadership in a non-profit organization, as I told, it's, since it's a voluntary, we cannot you know, press too much. But when you take up this role as a leader in an organization, as a member, you are committed. So when you are committed, it becomes a responsibility. It's not that you can skip telling that, no, I am uh, not going to do it because I don't have much time. But when you take it as a role, as any officer role in your club, you are morally accountable for that role. Please note that. Though it's a voluntary organization, you are accountable for what position you have taken to the club members, to the area, to the division, and to the district. 
So you need to put in not just 10% of your time or commitment, whereas you need to put 100% since you have taken it this role. Nobody has forced you. Yeah, sometimes we do force telling leaders, yes, you take up this role. Nothing much. We are there to take help you. We will support you. You just be there as a role. No. If somebody has told it's a wrong notion, actually, please do not fall into the trap. You are responsible for that role. Mm -hmm. You have to commit yourself 100%. Don't try to give excuses. I know you have come work commitments, family commitments. 22, 22 years into Toastmasters, if someone else was there, would have divorced me by now, actually. But my wife, you know, she's not here, though. She's in India. She has, you know, patiently accepted me as what I am, actually. So it's not that easy. You know, if you have a, if you have a family, you need to take care. Now, talking about leadership in Toastmasters or a non-profit organization or management, you need to understand that we need to set the vision. No, my district has a mission, club has a club mission, that's it. No, there is something beyond the mission we need to set within our club, actually. What is that vision? You need to set it up, actually. As a club leader, you have to, you need to have, you do have your own Benchmark 10, 10 out of 10, those points are the club success. And I do understand, but there is something which common vision which is going to help each other to support each other, take them to the next level. That is what is more important. Setting your vision in your club is the most important, actually. If you don't have a vision, sit up the XCOM, talk about the vision, what you really are looking forward, a larger vision to empower leaders, actually. In a management in a corporate, there is no vision actually. There are targets. You'll you'll be given targets, you have to complete within this time. If you do it, either you get a paycheck or you get a termination. Very simple factor. Here there is no termination factor. We don't terminate anybody, whereas we push each other to achieve excellence. Now, leaders influence and inspire people. We do have seen many leaders in District 20 actually who have really influenced and inspired us actually. I am a product of such leadership, actually. I had great mentors whom we call leaders, actually, who have always supported me. When I was the, when I talk about the, my role as a club growth director, 2018, I was a club growth director, whereas my last leadership position in the district was 2011, where I served as a division director. Span of seven years, at one point of time, they said, no, Salim, it's time that you take up the leadership of club growth, and thankfully, we were this very distinguished under the leadership of DT Kuram. Now, talking about we always need some sort of a push where we need mentors, actually. So, there comes the influence factor, actually. Whereas in management in a corporate office, it's drive people to get things, drive either you get paid extra or finish out of the company. Here, it's not the case, actually. We don't throw anybody out of Toastmasters. Now, drive change, integrity, and shape the culture. Whereas, enact the culture. Okay, There's a culture in a company we, which we need to adopt. Here, actually, drive change, integrate, and shape the culture. Now, proactive and forward thinking, reactive and short-term focus. We are leaders, actually. That's why we have a strategic plan coming up in the District 20 to think ahead five years from now. Now, talking about a slide which I have just uh, taken, inspired from somewhere, the goal of many leaders is to get people to think more highly of the leader. This is what they think. It's not the case, actually. What you think about me, it's immaterial. As a leader, what I impact I'm going to make. The great, uh, goal of a great leader is to help people think more highly of themselves. Like this. That is what I believe, and and I have, that's what been taught to me also. So if you're in leadership position, just imagine if you're in... Uh, DD for that matter, if you are a PQD, CGD, or any position for the matter, on a positive note, yes, you are there, you are a position, you are in the leadership, but just for a year, you will be become a immediate past officer. But whereas, you know, when you develop leaders, they look up to you always. Now, effective leaders provide a clear direction. As I told, we have a vision, what is that we are planning to do ahead, where are we moving forward, actually? There's a clear direction. That is why we had the club success plan. If clubs have not started working on your club success plan, start right away, actually, club success plan. What is that? And you need to 
allocate responsibility to each of the leaders it is the responsibility of the president to ensure that each member is involved into that vision or the club success plan we are talking about and drive them towards you know fulfilling it actually for that first we need to put a road map to it how are we going to do that now talking about foster collaboration this is the most important thing actually because as i told you we have a big challenge uh, within the corporate clubs we within the corporate clubs the hierarchy have some challenges you might be evaluating your manager or your manager might be serving as a sergeant terms for that matter and you are the president there it's a uh, different challenge where we face actually where you cannot go and tell him that sir you have to do these things you know then it might you know revert back in a different manner so you know you need to foster collaboration in a corporate club particularly or in any club for that matter people have their own egos they have they have their own high self esteem so to cater them to bring them to one platform is not that easy actually as leaders we need to have more you know in presence meeting come together you know meet often because uh, i don't believe in this setup of this zoom and things actually unfortunately we have to, had to carry on these things because of the situation but in future there will be more in person meeting within your club have more in person meeting don't have zoom meetings for your club excom it is not going to be helpful actually so bring in more you know and try to bring in more of your sub committee members as a leader don't think that i am alone as a sergeant tam what is that i have to do you can have your own sub committee members with whom you can interact have a separate meeting with them actually take them for a biryani okay or a coffee sit with them try to you know talk to them and see how you can bring them to your vision of improving the club quality not motivate achievement actually this is the most important thing which uh, we need to um, really adapt within the club itself now achievement has to be first recognized also and motivate them to reach out to certain level actually this is where because members are not driven self driven actually we as excom we need to motivate them actually the vp education in this case actually luckily we have uh, in my club we have toshmaster rashid memon who is being a driving force in our club actually and he has been telling members no you have not done your project for two months actually i am not going to let you go you have to take up your project in next meeting the following month there is another person he always you know pushes members actually so that members of encourage to take up position and there is some sort of an you know at the end you will find the achievement what's happened and we'll be you know at the end we will be achieving excellence in terms of dcp the ribbons comes in the trophies the medals it really you know helps the club to boost actually this is type of achievements we have to foster now team leaders encourage participation now this is the most important thing actually i know you are all pushing your members to attend today's court session for the sake of learning yes i do understand but there are a lot of pushing happening because you want to achieve that point for dcp okay but it is quite see this is the reward what do you get when you attend actually that's fine now we encourage participation in all the activities you know be it a contest the biggest challenge is that may we don't have participation in the club level for the speeches for the role players and every time the vp education takes a huge task in arranging them actually now for that actually we need to encourage participation so we can have some sort of an you know recognition towards the end that this member had taken 10 roles within the club meetings and he will be given a yes, trophy or an award so the more the participation of the member in the club activities there should be some sort of an you know reward towards the end so what happens members are encouraged to take up any position for that matter actually but not the same position as a for example sergeant uh, timer or uh, a counter there should be a variety so you can tell them each role each member should have taken at least two roles of each category of the role players so this you know encourages more participation 
you can go and announce this in your club tell them that we are going to have some award for members who take up roles because we we don't recognize them we do recognize for thanking them during the club meeting but at the end we don't recognize them that you have taken role now you can have a point grading system like a corporate set up kpi wherein you can give them points for them participating in the club meeting or in the club contest or be going beyond the club the area division and district so you can encourage them to go out actually for me actually uh, when i joined toastmasters we hardly had eight clubs in bahrain we didn't have exposure and 2005 when i was attending my first division contest actually in the carlton hotel i was given the role of assistant you know media team assistant in the media team like i was so happy and crazy thrill oh god i am getting a uh, role of an assistant media team assistant in a media team there we had uh, zulfikar we had uh, guraz vankadia we had many people part of the media team and they just embraced me and they said come come you sit down all i had to do is give them the clip on mic you know do some adjustments in the sound system and it really encouraged me actually i was very happy so encourage your members to go outside your club i this is very rare that i see a full house of a club attending a area contest for that matter actually. so we need to encourage them to attend the area contest division contest where the majority of the learning happens actually the club what we learn is maybe 10% whereas you go beyond your club in in dub you know multifolds actually so we need to encourage them which uh, the excom has to take them actually what we need to do is put them in a uh, organizing committee within the area contest division contest so this is where the encouragement comes like i i remember like 2008 we had a detack in bahrain in crown plaza and uh, then we had a treasurer alex hinate he was the treasurer there actually and he encouraged members free membership free entry for people who are taking role plays come in there were around 50 members who took role, role players voluntarily so this sort of an encouragement we have to give them now facilitate communication communication is mostly you know one way what we see in most of the cases and i don't um, blame the technology but whatsapp has become a culprit today we pro on bombard messages you know we really don't know what message i open the mobile phone i see 100 plus messages there in each group i don't know which group to open and which and many of them have you know not taken that seriously the messages which comes in whatsapp so we need to really you know foster communication it's not one way communication that this is going to happen bombarded with whatsapp messages a clear concise monthly calendar from can come from the district division the area and the club actually so what exactly we need to do where we stand so and this should be more of interactive session communication now talking about facilitate problem solving actually this is the most important thing at times you need to take immediate action but at times you need to brush under the carpet you don't you need to you know ponder upon that because my leader actually one of my mentors actually when there is an issue he would not address it actually he would just say okay let's wait let the parties come we will discuss within a week or time you know what happens is that the problem is dissolved but at times most of the times if you delay the process the members might leave the organization so there's you need to identify the right time but you need to facilitate problem solving within the excom within the members statistically it is said that 50% of the members leave the organization in the first year itself that's why if you see any club for that matter you will see eight members join this year and the base next year is going to be the same and the following year eight members join the base is going to be the same so why because the more the members join the newcomers they leave the organization because they are not being you know told what to be done when you actively part involve them then there is an you know improvement in the club retention so i would uh, the cgd can take note of it actually involve more members you know some sort of a statistics we have to study on and we have to bring foster retention of members actually now talking about tolerate mistakes to what extent i leave it to the particular leader actually tolerate mistakes what happens when we are bound 
as i told you it's a voluntary organization here people do mistakes we don't need to take it so seriously whereas but we need to make them accountable actually it's not that they can take it for granted any position they take in they need to be accountable for what they are doing actually but at the same time we don't need to penalize them at all i remember like when i was a district director there was a uh, issue which was popped up i didn't even form up a disciplinary committee i said fact finding committee once the fact finding committee submitted the report we asked the member see this is the fact members have done the mistake so let's you know forgive them and this member gracefully you know she said i would forgive the member the matter was resolved there was harmony back in the club so this type you know we need to do that rather than you know making more you know harsh for the members actually because members might leave this um, something which members really look into is the self esteem and the privileges what they achieve help team members grow this is where you know we we as leaders are more important role players in shaping up the members ensuring that they become what is their join for actually because they may not share with you that i want to finish my uh, path one this year path two we have to identify them we need to encourage them to grow further persuade members you know you know it's nothing wrong in persuading members actually and talk telling them to you know achieve greater height benefits of team improve the quality of work life increase productivity reduce cost yes benefits of team actually this always because there are a lot of new ideas comes when we discussed and there might be you know cost reduction in many of the aspects enhance product or service quality improve organization and company quality here at the end actually it's not that we are working for the district but we are part of the district please don't think when leaders come and tell you that no we have to achieve uh, smedley distinguished this year as a district no it it can't achieve all alone the district cannot achieve all alone actually as leaders when we collaborate when we work together we grow we move one step further we become president distinguished club the area becomes president distinguished area the division becomes president distinguished division then the district can become smedley distinguished so at every level there should be some sort of an you know involvement then only we can become sitting there in the top of the district they cannot do it all alone actually your cooperation your support is always important and as a leaders actually please one thing is that uh, we do always uh, name as servant leadership actually there is something a word called servant leadership which we you know do it every time and show them not necessarily that you have to be a servant leader yes to certain extent but at the same time you need to motivate others encourage others empower others so that they can also take up roles rather than you be doing things on your own actually because uh, there should be a level point where you should you know stop doing certain things actually because that's why my my mentors tell me that don't do repeat the role which you have done but unfortunately certain times we have to do taking up a club officer role or in being an area director sometimes we have to do it but but try not to do it we empower others and support them now this is a quote from mr sam j owen the person who is worthy of being a leader wants power not for himself but in order to be of service now as a leader you must be in a very small position the size of a cat just an illustration actually but i am sure you start looking at yourself as a great leader and we want you to see as future leaders of area division and district so with this i end my uh, 